Hey, what's up everybody? This is Osterberg501 and today I want to go over all of the different modifications and upgrades you can do to gear pieces in Diablo 4. So to start off, we have a system I've gone over many times, which is the Legendary Power and Legendary Aspect System. So in Diablo 4, there's going to be hundreds of Legendary Powers, either general use or class specific, and these Legendary Powers can randomly roll on a handful of different gear slots. So one Legendary Power may be able to roll on weapons, chests, and amulets, and all Legendary Powers have a handful of those slots that they can randomly roll on and these legendary powers can roll like normal affixes so they have a range in how strong they can roll so for instance maybe one legendary power can roll from 10 to 20 percent now once you have a legendary item you can also take that to an occultist npc and pull that legendary power off of that item which turns it into a legendary aspect now this will destroy that item and give you a one-time use item that is the legendary aspect and you'll be able to put that legendary aspect on any rare or legendary piece that is an applicable gear slot so if you get a legendary power that can't roll on weapons, you can't take that power and put it on a weapon. Now, if you put one of these legendary aspects on a rare item, it just adds it to it. It doesn't remove any affixes or change a gear piece in any other way. It will also turn that item into legendary quality as well. And then if you take that legendary aspect and put it on a different legendary item, it overwrites the legendary power on that item and it turns it into the aspect that you've applied to it. And then you have the codex of power system that's also tied into legendaries and a tldr of this is when you complete dungeons you will unlock a permanent legendary power in the codex of power now these are the lowest rolled versions of legendary powers but these aren't used up so you can apply these to infinite items as long as those items can normally roll that legendary power and the codex of power will most likely just cost gold to apply that power to an item so the codex of power Power is the early and mid game system that will allow you to get a lot of legendary powers and then into the end game you want the higher rolled versions of these powers from actual legendary gear pieces and also a lot of this upcoming information is going to be for max roll so i'll have that linked in the description this is one of the only places maybe the only place you can get a lot of this very specific information on diablo 4. so next up we have gems sockets and the jeweler NPC. So in Diablo 4, there's going to be seven different types or colors of gems, and these are going to work in a similar way to as they did in Diablo 3. So we have amethyst, emeralds, rubies, topaz, sapphire, diamonds, and skulls. And all of these different gems are going to do different things depending on what item types you put them in. And then there are also going to be higher and higher tiers of gems that increase those stats that the gems are giving. And you would upgrade these gems in the same way you would in Diablo 3, where you can get three of one tier of gem and upgrade it into the next tier, then you need three of that tier to upgrade to the next tier, and so on. And I don't think we know what the maximum tier of gems are going to be, but for some examples, we have Amethyst, and this would be Crude Amethyst. This would give 4% increased damage over time when slotted into a weapon. It would give 6.6% .6 damage over time reduction when slotted into armor, and it would give 11.5% shadow resistance when slotted into jewelry and then upgrading to chipped amethyst would increase the weapon effect to 5%, the armor effect to 8.2%, and the jewelry effect to 14.3%. So upgrading gems increases the amount of stats they're going to be giving, and the different gems are going to do different things depending on what they're slotted into, and this is the same thing for everything else. So for an emerald, you would get increased damage to elites if put into a weapon, you would get increased thorns when put into armor, and you would get poison resistance since when put into jewelry. And again, on Max World, they have all the information on what all the different gems do. I don't want to go over all of that because the video is just going to be way too long. And as mentioned, you'll be getting gems throughout playing the game. And presumably, once you get higher level, higher tiers, once you get into the end game, you'll just be getting higher tier gems at a baseline. And then you'll still be able to upgrade to the maximum gems, getting three of those the same way you would at lower tiers. So you'll probably want to be saving basically every gem you come across because you can always upgrade the lower tiers into higher tiers and potentially make a handful of lower tier gems into some of the highest tier gems and all that's going to take 
is three copies of one tier of gem and some gold. And that's the same thing for upgrading into every next tier. And at the jeweler, you're also able to unsocket gems out of their sockets for a gold cost. So you can either upgrade that gem and put it back in or put a different gem into that socket. Which brings us nicely into sockets. And sockets are, as you would expect, you're just able to put one of those different colored gems into it. And every piece of gear can roll a different amount of sockets, either one or two. So helmets are one socket, chests are two sockets, legs are two sockets, amulets are one socket, rings are one socket, one-handed weapons are one socket, two-handed weapons are two sockets, bows are two sockets, and focuses are one socket, and I'm assuming that's just offhand for, say, casters. And every piece of gear can just randomly roll with these sockets you can just put gems into right away. But if you have a piece of gear that's really well rolled, but it doesn't have sockets on it, you can actually apply sockets into gear pieces with shattered prisms. And this is a resource that has a chance to drop from the world bosses in the game. And I think there's going to be three world bosses on launch. And that's all it requires is that one shattered prism to add a socket to a piece of gear. And then finally, the jeweler can also upgrade jewelry pieces. Now, upgrading a jewelry piece increases its resistances as well as all other stats rolled on that piece. So essentially, it just upgrades every piece of that jewelry. And gear pieces also have a very similar system just at the blacksmith. So this is essentially just gear upgrading. Just the jewelry pieces are at the jeweler and all the armor pieces are going to be at the blacksmith. And depending on what rarity the item is, is how many Many times you can upgrade it. Now upgrading lower tier stuff usually isn't worth it, but you can upgrade rare items three times and you can upgrade legendary items four times. And every new upgrade is going to cost different resources and potentially more gold. And then once you get up to legendary upgrades, the final upgrade for legendary pieces are also going to cost some legendary resources and are going to be very expensive. For instance, that final upgrade for legendary jewelry also costs 135,000 gold. And all these upgrades are going to cost some gold, but it's going to scale up pretty heavily on legendary pieces. So that brings us to upgrading at the blacksmith. And first off, I want to say there's some information that I'm not entirely sure on because I have heard some mixed information on some of the specifics for upgrading. And specifically on max roll, they list out all of the different resources, the different tiers of upgrading are going to cost. And they also have jewelry pieces in the upgrading specifically from the blacksmith. Now, I'm not sure if this is just lumping in all the possible upgrades into one place and it's just under the blacksmith tab because I've also heard some of that information from other sources or if there's going to be some type of double upgrading for jewelry where you can upgrade it at the blacksmith and at the jeweler. So not 100% sure on some of those specifics, but you can still get a general idea of how this upgrading is going to work. So you'll be able to upgrade all of the different item pieces with various different resources you'll find throughout the game. And depending on the rarity is how many times you can upgrade it. So pretty much the exact same thing as with the jeweler. And I'm not sure how many times you can upgrade, say, lower tier stuff, but it's seeming like the max amount you can upgrade items is five, which presumably will be legendary and unique items would be the only things you're able to upgrade five times. Rare might be four, and then lower rarities would be below that. And upgrading items are actually going to be very important because upgrading not only just increases the power of the affixes, it also increases that gear piece's item power, but that will also increase that item's base armor and weapon damage. Now this is important because base armor is very strong for just damage mitigation and base weapon damage is very important because most, if not all skills in the game, base their damage somewhat off of your weapon damage. So upgrading your weapon to the maximum point is also going to just increase the damage all of your abilities are doing, which is going to be pretty massive getting into the end game. And then finally, we have enchanting at the occultist NPC, and this works in a very similar way to Diablo 3. So essentially what you can do is take one affix from a piece of gear and you can roll that affix for better stats or a different affix. 
but once you choose one stat to reroll, that item will then become bound, so you wouldn't be able to trade it. And once you choose that affix to reroll, you are not able to reroll any other affixes on that gear piece. So say your gear piece has crit damage, crit chance, and a elemental resistance on it. If you choose to reroll, say, crit chance, you can't roll any of the other stats and that gear piece will not be bound, but you can always continue to re-roll that one slot you have chosen. Now this can either be used to get better rolls of that affix or to get a new affix, but also different affixes cannot roll together. So certain combinations you won't be able to get, but that's something we don't have the specific information on. And that's something you'll just have to learn throughout playing the game. So maybe if you have this set of affixes on the item, you couldn't re-roll that one affix and get anything you wanted, but there would still be a handful of affixes that can roll in that slot. So it works in basically the exact same way you could reroll singular affixes in Diablo 3. And in the end game, this is generally going to work as a finisher for a piece of gear. So you get a piece of gear, it's everything you want. It has all really good stats, except one stat roll maybe isn't exactly what you want, or maybe it's a low roll. You can get that roll higher or change it to the roll you actually want. So this is actually going to be much more important when trying to min-max your gear than I think a lot of people would generally realize. So that's all the different modifications you can do to gear pieces in Diablo 4, but I want to go through what the process would be to get a best in slot rolled item. And we're going to ignore unique items for this because those are going to be incredibly rare statically rolled items. So this is going to be best in slot before uniques. So rare items are actually going to end up being the best in slot items. This is because rare items can roll up to five affixes and legendary items can roll up to four affixes plus their legendary affix. So generally what the first thing you would do is you would want to get a well rolled rare item or a best in slot rolled rare item with the five affixes you want then you would want to find a legendary item with a well rolled or best in slot roll on that legendary items legendary power like i mentioned legendary powers can roll like normal affixes so say one could be 10 to 35 percent so you would want to find that legendary item, you would take that legendary item to the occultist, pull that legendary power off of it, and put that legendary power onto that rare item. And then you would want to take that item, which is now legendary, which has five affix rolls and a legendary power on it, you would take it to the jeweler, and you would want to choose the worst rolled affix on it and re-roll that into either the affix you want or re-roll that to a max rolled version of that affix. Then you would want to go get the highest tier of gem and put that in the socket if it has a socket on it. If it doesn't have a socket, you would want to apply a socket to it from the jeweler for that resource it drops from rolled bosses. Depending on the item, it can have up to two sockets. So you'd want to put the top tier of gems in that socket depending on what different gem you want to use and what different stats you want from those gems. And then depending on what type of item this is, you would take it to the jeweler or the blacksmith and upgrade it as many times as you can. Like I mentioned, I'm not sure about the specifics if jewelry pieces can also be upgraded at the blacksmith while already being upgraded to the jeweler, or if that was just a list of all the upgrades, you would take it wherever you can upgrade it and upgrade it to the maximum you can. And that is how you would go about getting a best in slot item that isn't a unique. Have the best gems in it, have the maximum amount of sockets you can have in it, have the best rolled affixes in it, have a top rolled legendary power on it, and then have it fully upgraded from whatever NPC will upgrade that piece of gear. Now just a last little bit of information, that is just on the launch of Diablo 4. Remember, after a couple weeks after the launch, we're getting season 1, and then we're going to be getting a new season every 3 months that could potentially change gearing, could potentially change how you can modify gear, and we already know the developers have teased that they want to add in set pieces and runes in future seasons. So this is just going to be on the launch and I would fully expect there are going to be other gear modifications and probably rarities in future seasons and expansions. But that's pretty much all I want to go over with gear modification for Diablo 4. So subscribe if you want to see more Diablo 4 or other videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about all of these things you can do to gear. And thanks for watching.